Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mow Time, hosted by Evergreen Lawns and Gardens. My name is Ben and today we are doing a little educational video on how to mow like a professional. So today we are at a backyard, this is a Tiff Tough Bermuda lawn, so we're going to utilise it. I just went with this one given it's a very square, square, rectangular uh, shaped basic one to do an educational video on uh, how to mow professionally. And we are just getting a light shower through here in Brisbane. So we'll just push through and uh, do the video in the rain. I'm sure it'll pass by as most of the showers coming through Brisbane at the moment are very short and last don't last too long. So yeah, so today's an educational video on those of you who are at home and just not knowing how to mow to get that professional look. Now, don't get me wrong, you can't just get a professional look based on the way you mow the lawn. It also comes down to factors like what sort of mower you have, um, what type of grass variety you have as well, and that will depend on the finished look of your lawn. But today is just the basics on how to mow your lawn professionally and to make sure that you don't miss bits, etc. when you stand back at your finished product and see little bits of stalks of grass sitting up everywhere. So I'll show you a few key things to make sure that doesn't happen. Now for you guys that have just started a mowing business and are new to it and still learning, but you know, have a somewhat gist of what to do, um, um, then this is sort of helpful you for you because you're not if you if you're missing bits then you have to go back to that area and redo it um, and you're wasting precious time to get the job done and move on to your next job okay maybe it's gonna be a little heavier than I thought whatever let's keep going um, so yeah so today like I said this is a tiff top lawn variety beautiful lawn definitely due for a haircut but yeah this has had a slow release for about two months ago and that is seeing it through nicely and then currently we are getting some of these rain showers through brisbane as we have a storm heading down the east coast of australia where brisbane is based here in australia so um yeah so we're getting some nice rain through currently which is really kicking the lawns along and as you're probably watching this your lawns probably growing pretty quick too if you're here in brisbane um and whatnot so yeah so let's get into it um first and foremost is doing your pass around the perimeter so i like to do two passes around the perimeter um, and, and that's for a particular reason so if you come up to this area here um, and we'll say here we're going to do a pass up this strip then i'll also come back and do another pass the same width as the mower mine's a 21 inch mower and i'll do a same width cut out here so it brings us out to about here now the reason for that is doing two passes instead of one it means when you're doing your lines back and forward back and forward along here you've got room to turn the mower around now if you don't leave yourself a wide a wide enough cutting width around your perimeter when you swing the mower around quickly to do your next pass you'll sometimes miss bits of clumps because um, there's too too not enough space basically to turn your mower around so um yeah so make sure you know if you're against a wall or a fence then leave two cutting width decks um in space and that'll give you enough space to turn your mower around and make your way back along there all right so let's get into our first pass around the perimeter <laughs> Alright guys, so that was a brief 
shower like I said it would be, but I got drenched in the meantime, but whatever. Nice cool down rain. Um, and we can't complain of rain, it is good for growth. Uh, so, and anyone who's got water tanks as well. Um, so yeah, like I was talking about earlier, the tube um, trim passes around the edge first. So as you can see here, I've made two trim passes, giving me a nice, well, 42 inch, 50 to 50 inch space from the edge. Now again, we do this um, so you can turn your mower and your handlebars will not hit into here, like the trees, like here, or if you have a fence, or if you have a wall, or anything that is um, up against your grass line. So yeah, it gives you that turning space to um, turn without missing any cut bits. Now, bear in mind, I've done this wide of a cut because my mower is quite long. So I run a HIU 216 commercial grade Honda, and it is quite long. So I've got the extension bars along with your blade engagement and your drive engagement so I've got all this extra length now if you've just got a general um, Victor or a Mazport or a smaller Honda um, just for sort of home use then yours won't be as long plus I've also got the bull bar and carry bar on the front here as well so mine is yeah quite long so that's why I leave such a wide gap for turning in now if you have a smaller mile that's not so long, you don't have to do as wide a uh, wider gap um, for your um, first and second passes round. You could almost just get away with doing one, but again, it depends how confined you are up against whatever it is in your path um, to spin your mile around and make your pass for the next one. So, the next, um, the next little tip we're going to talk about is um, getting your lines right. So that is the big thing for the finish of the lawn. Now, a lot of people um, ask me about how do I get stripes in my lawn, etc. blah, blah, blah. Now, stripes in your lawn purely comes down to the type of mower you got. So, uh, commercial mower like I've got here, which is just your domestic rotary mower, it will not generally really create stripes in your lawn because um, it doesn't have what's known as a roller. Now a roller is what is on a cylinder mower and if you're not sure what a cylinder mower is just google it and you'll be able to find out but on the back of a cylinder mower is a big heavy steel roller and that is what's used to fold the grass blade over and create those stripes. Now it isn't exactly the mower that creates the stripes it's the mower paired with the big ball of heat up there the sun so the mower folds the grass blade over one way and then when you turn around and do your pass back this way it folds the grass over the opposite direction and what creates the stripes look um, is the sun bouncing off the folded over glass glass grass blades um, and that is how you get the stripes look in your lawn so yeah, so if you want that look, you do need to get a cylinder mower. Um, but again, that's taking it up to a far more next level when you're ready to cylinder mower. That is a different kettle of fish altogether. This video is just for the beginners who are learning to mow with their um, rotary mower they've got at home. So, um, so yeah, you're not really going to get any striped look out of your mower. Um, the other things it comes down to also is the weight of your mower. Some people like the lines look of the wheels in, in the grass, um, which does look nice, um, just to give it a nice look and you see some lines, sort of, not stripes, but lines of the, the wheels marks in your, making grooves in your lawn. So that you can definitely achieve with your home mower. The problem, like you see, if you have a look at my mower videos and my video, you'll see that mine leaves quite decent lines, but that's because it's a heavy mower. So it comes down to the weight of your mower as well. Mine's quite a heavy mower being a commercial grade mower and it tends to leave heavier line marks where um, your smaller mowers that aren't so heavy might not leave as many line marks. So yeah, you've just really depends on the finish will depend on the type of mower you've got. Um, and also depends on the type of grass variety you are working with as well. So this is a tiff tough grass. This can be mowed really really low with a rotary mower and can be mowed quite high as well um, but yeah i'm cutting this one at approximately like 40 to 50 mil um, i left it a bit too long we've been flat out and with the rain around here in brisbane everything is growing like no tomorrow and so yeah i've left it a bit really a bit long to cut this lawn but it's just when i got a chance to get in and cut it so um yeah so uh yeah so 
Talking about the mower, yeah, it depends on the type of mower you got, will depend on the finishing look on um, what sort of lines you get in your lawn. Some people don't even like lines in their lawn, they like no lines appearing in their lawn. They just like the whole flush green look, which is beautiful as well. I like it all. As long as it's grass related, I like it. So um, yeah, so it's up to you. So as you can see already, I've made some passes here and you can see um, you know, the lines come up quite clearly. Now they will come up more clearly the higher the grass is as well, um, just because you've got more grass to fold over. So, um, so yeah, the lines will show up a little bit more. And again, like I said, it depends on the weight of your mower. Um, obviously, if you've got more weight on a grass blade, it's going to fold down flatter and whatnot. So yeah, so next, what we're gonna talk about is actually keeping a straight line and mowing straight. So when we talk about that, um, it, it's, it again depends on your mower. So as you can see on my mower, if I get down in line, mine's a 21 inch cut and you can see the mower deck actually sticks out a bit further than my wheels. Um, now, um, now with depending on your mower, you need to find out where your blade disc um, Oh shoot, not blade disc, your, your cutter deck, sorry, comes out too. Now on, on your smaller sort of Mazport and Victors and whatnot, they won't come out this far. They might come inside the line of the wheel. And if that's the case, then you need to work out where you need to line your wheel up with your next pass along um, the grass. So with mine, I'm able to just put my wheel back in the line of the wheel um, mark I've made already and it'll cut the grass I know for sure because I know my cutting blades are coming out wider than the outside of this wheel so that's how I gauge my um, lines to get them nice and straight I just know if I keep my wheels in the wheel markings made already that I'll get a clean cut and I'll get a parallel lines each time we move along now again you need to check out your mower um, and see where the cutting disc uh, cutting disc did again where the um, the deck comes out to and then you'll be able to work out from there where you need to put your wheels for it to keep a nice straight cut and also cut everything as you pass along now if you're not sure just do a couple of passes first um, and that'll tell you that'll just give you a guide on where you need to put your wheels and then some people say focus on something in the distance and aim for that i don't necessarily do that because sometimes if you're watching too far ahead you're losing um you're, you're being distracted from what's actually happening in front of your mower so i generally like to watch a couple of meters in ahead of me and come back to the mower um, and, and that way it just keeps me nice and straight and at the end you've got a nice straight line not these like zigzaggy lines where you're bumping all over the place um, so yeah, now also before you do mow as a professional, if I already like know the lawn, so take this one for instance, I always come here and check for fruit sitting on the ground because anything sitting on your lawn, um, one, if it's sitting there too long, it'll kill the grass and two, um, it might be something you run over and your wheels will bump and knock and shift your cutter deck out of position or just raise your cutter deck up so you don't cut that bit and you keep going. So if you're a bit fussy like that, make sure you do a bit of a walk around of your property or if you have children that do a lot of playing in the backyard and like to drop a lot of toys in the grass, then keep an eye out for them or you'll see Mr. Ken or Mr. Barbie's arm go flying this way and his leg go flying that way and your kid might not be too happy about that. So yeah, so I saw a bit of um, fruit here um, while I was mowing the trim pass and looks what it's done so it's left a dead patch here from sitting here too long um, don't get me wrong this will come back it's all good but yeah you just don't want to leave those things on your lawn so it is good to walk around and pick off anything that may have fallen on the lawn and get rid of it so you one don't mow over it and two it doesn't kill your lawn so yeah these are the little fruit things that drop and you just got to get them off the lawn before you start mowing so yeah so i'll attach the camera to the mower and then I'll, I'll i'll do a couple of passes and you'll be able to see exactly what i'm talking about when i'm running my wheels in the uh wheel line that's marked there already from my first pass so yeah that's step number two in uh, how to line my lawn
All right, guys, so step number three, I just want to talk about your catcher. So, um, so emptying your catcher is really important as well um, for ending up with that professional look of a mow on your lawn. So you don't want to let your catcher fill up till it's chockers and your mower is spitting it out everywhere. That is not ideal. You want to sort of um, empty that when it's just on full or even just under full, something around there. You don't want to let the mower spit out grass and get too clogged up um, and then it's just spitting grass over your lawn and that left on your lawn then just dies and it just looks nasty um, and doesn't look professional and you've got dead grass sitting on your lawn. So, um, so yeah, next tip is to keep an eye on your catcher and make sure you empty it before it gets overloaded um, and spits grass everywhere. The other problem with leaving it until you, your mower is spitting grass everywhere is the mower is spitting grass out, but it's also spitting it and getting caught up under your deck. And that means if you've got a lot of grass and mud stuck under your cutting deck, that means airflow under your deck is restricted by the grass there and it won't flow as well and it won't cut as well and shoot the grass back into your catcher very good. So there's a little lesson learned from that. Don't let your catcher get all the way full that it's spitting out the side for those two reasons. Um, so yeah, definitely a big tip because um, that's one people most commonly do. They're not sure when to empty their catcher. They wait till it spits out the side and the mower's struggling. They're like, oh, time to empty the catcher, but don't leave it that long. So what I normally do, if your lawn's really long, um, then just gauge. So make some passes. And then yes, the first time if your mower starts to spit out, then you know you've gone too far. So say you did two passes of your lawn um, from side to side or back to front or however you're mowing and it spits it out, then you know two passes is too much. You need to only do like one and a half passes and then empty your catcher. And then you'll know, okay, that's how many passes I can do before I need to empty the catcher and it won't spit it out everywhere. Now, yeah, that air circulation that your mower blades create underneath your mower is really important with cutting the grass, then, then pushing the grass back through your mower chute um, through your catcher chute into your catcher. So yeah, don't let it get that long that you are changing the catcher when your mower is spitting it out all underneath the cutter deck, okay? That's uh, step number three or something. Wasn't keeping an eye count on the steps, but yeah, that's it. guys well that is it for today i hope you've sort of picked up some tips and are going to go out into your lawn and have a go at uh, those little tips i gave you for mowing like a pro if you have any questions or uncertainties or anything like that make sure you put them in the comments below um, but yeah that's sort of the super basics to how to mow your lawn like a professional um, and that just for the beginners who are wanting to uh, learn how to mow properly but yeah also learning how to mow properly also um, makes your time mowing faster as well instead of sort of going all over the place and whatnot. So if you do mow like I showed you, it can tend to make your lawn uh, a faster mow job for you. So yeah, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we are all done on this tiff tough backyard here. Um, now it was a bit soggy due to that bit of rain we got through, but this stuff is looking good. I'm super happy with this. Um, and as you can see, the lines in it, and again, like I mentioned earlier, these may not come out as striking as they are if your mower, like mine, is um, not not as heavy as mine sort of thing. But um, sometimes if you mow in the wet, you'll definitely get more lines because the dirt below it is moist. So yeah, the, the uh, mower create a bit more um, heavier lines through your lawn. So. Yes, yeah, so that's it, um, the mow on the tiff tough. Um, and that's it for today's video. It was just a short and simple one that I wanted to do for those of you who are, you know, in this new year or even last year, starting to get out in their lawn more and start to look, uh, learn to look after your lawn um, in how to fertilize it and how to mow properly. Now, um, now that I've sort of given you a beginner's guide on how to mow your lawn correctly, um, a key thing to remember too is just to regularly mow as well if you're looking for that uh, nice pristine lawn. But um, 
but yeah but anyway so thank you so much to the new subscribers who subscribed and for the old ones as well thank you so much for the support in the channel um, you obviously love your lawn and gardens as I do and uh, are following along for the ride with this channel in learning new things for me and the things I already know teaching you about them as well so yeah if you haven't subscribed already make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell um, and uh, go check out my channel with previous educational videos on there on um, garden related stuff and lawn related stuff um, and uh, also catch my latest video on creating a little mini garden for yourself inside that is a good one for those of you who are bored and stuck at home due to COVID or just want to learn a new hobby or try something new at home without getting outside so yeah go check that one out um if you haven't already i'll leave the link up here for you um and you'll be able to go check that out or here i can't remember which side it is one of those sides the link will be there but go and click that and you'll be able to go check that video out as well so anyway ladies and gents i hope you're staying well i hope you've had a fantastic start to your new year and i hope it just keeps getting better for everyone and that so yeah stay positive stay happy and um yeah we'll see you in the next video